Hello everybody, this is the Old Bears from the Old Bears Den of Bigfoot. I'm back again, finally. Uh, here's an update on my daughter. Um, we are weighing all the options. Um, radiation, chemo, and all that stuff. And uh, homeopathic medicine. Uh, She's scared, was to be expected, but she's a tough little girl. Uh, she reminds me of me in a lot of ways, hard-headed. <laughs> but I wouldn't trade her for anything in this world. Love her to death. I, it, shouldn't say that. Uh, I love my little girl. I love all my girls. Got four of them. I love each and every one of them. But uh, she's doing pretty good. So don't y'all worry. Just keep praying for her. And uh, we've got it narrowed down to one of two ways now. And uh, she's going to be fine. Uh, won't let anything else happen. She's... Uh, She's going to be perfectly fine. The Lord's going to take care of it. He's going to touch her and heal her body. And uh, I thank him for it now because I know that in his name and through his stripes that he, that he took for every one of us, she will be healed. But we have a story for you guys today. Um, I'm showing you some uh, collars of the trees, and uh, this is a story of a Bigfoot that I would say is almost 16 foot tall. It's a huge one, big, old Bigfoot. Anyway, uh, this story happened here in West Virginia up in Randolph County. And uh, this couple uh, bought a farm, a small farm, you know, a couple, maybe 150 acres is about all they had. And uh, this, they bought it from this old couple. They moved to Florida with their kid down there to be with their kids and their grandkids. And that's why they sold their property. Well, they got it for next to nothing because the, uh, the older couple wasn't trying to uh, take advantage of anybody. Which is a good thing. Anyways, the Bigfoot in question just kind of showed up. Uh, the older couple said they didn't know anything about and never had anything strange happen on their property because I spoke to them also. But this young couple had been there two or three weeks and then they started hearing stuff getting thrown on their roof at night. Well, there was rocks, little rocks, not big rocks, just small rocks, you know, like uh, 57 gravel, river gravel, small rocks tossed on top of the house. And, um, there's a few little sticks thrown on top of the house. Well, the man had to go out there once a week and clean all that stuff off and all the gutters and everything else, and he was getting kind of frustrated with it. And, um they heard something walking around the house a couple of nights and uh he'd go out and they couldn't find anything so they uh got a hold of a, a friend of theirs that knew about me and this happened quite a few years ago um back uh, before I went to Columbus, Ohio, which was in 2004. So it was about 2002, 2003, uh, when this happened. And, um, they contacted me. I told them it'd be a week before I could get up there. I took a weekend and went up there. Uh, it was late summer. Uh, almost, in fact, it was 
pretty close to September. It was late August. And I got up there, and they still had the rocks throwing and everything else on their house. And, uh, you know, I went and looked around on their property and found some tree breaks and stuff like that. But most of the tree breaks were above 12 feet. Uh, they weren't big trees. Uh, if you see the tree to your left, that's about as big as it got. Uh, about up to uh, about what you're seeing there at the very top of the screen is about where the tree break would have been uh, and that was the biggest one that I found the rest of them are kind of smaller trees and uh, but uh, anyway uh, you know I found that evidence and you know, found a couple of partial prints of just the just the uh, front of the part of the foot, the toes, um, and uh, that's all I found. I didn't find a lot on their property. Didn't find hardly anything, actually. Just you know, maybe twelve or fifteen, maybe the most tree breaks at the time, and just found a couple. A uh, left foot and a right foot impression uh, of the uh, ball from the pad of the foot where the toes are at. And that's all I found. The uh, ground was pretty hard, so I didn't expect to find a lot of tracks. And uh, it was one of those summers when it was hot and not a lot of rain in August. And so we didn't expect to find a lot of tracks or anything of that nature. Uh, but like I said, the tree breaks were at about 12 foot high, which is pretty far up there. Uh, of course, I had a tape measure, a uh, Stanley tape measure of the metal ones, and would uh, hang it on there and then go to the ground, and they'd be about 12 foot up. Just about all of them were. Well, I was there on Saturday and looked around, and then Saturday night, uh, they uh, cooked dinner and uh, invited me in to eat dinner with them. And while in there eating dinner, some rocks got thrown on the house, and the house got smacked. So I took off out the door, and... Uh, did my best uh, to find what had smacked the house. And of course, I knew what it was because I found the foot impressions and the tree breaks, but couldn't find it. It evidently had took it, taken off whenever I uh, went out the door. I went out the back door. And uh, so nothing really happened Saturday night except for that smack on the house and some rocks you know, later at night, and I tried to catch it, and I stayed out in my truck at night uh, in case it showed up. I guess it threw rocks at the house from a distance, so no big deal. Anyway, it wasn't really trying to be aggressive or anything of that nature. It never harmed the kids. The wife had seen it once. Uh, the husband had seen it whenever it took off from behind the house. Well, it was standing at the corner, back at the corner, from the corner of the house, about 30 or 40 yards, and he seen it when he pulled in the driveway. It was dark, and the headlights hit it, and it took off running, and he watched it run off. And then uh, the wife had seen it once. Um, she was sitting on the back porch one night, and her husband was working uh, double shifts, and uh, the kids were out playing as right at a little bit before dark. And this thing came walking around the side of the house. And all she could see of it from the porch was about underneath its breasts, you know, where the it was a male. She said it was definitely a male, so she could see that much of it. And she grabbed the kids up off the porch and took them inside. And that's about it on, uh, you know, stuff that this thing done. Well, the thing of it was, uh, Sunday, after Saturday night, uh, trying to 
catch this thing or, or you know get it to leave or whatever you know trying different things uh sunday she had the kids out in the uh, field they had some uh goats and had billy goats a couple of billy goats in there with the uh nannies and it was the female goats and they had a couple of horses you know they weren't uh the full size they were the pony type horses they had three or four of them and they hung out around the barn all the time, which was about uh, 75 yards from the house. And uh, the kids were out there playing. Uh, she was doing something to the field, uh, planting something in the field there. And uh, one of the billy goats come over and head-butted one of the kids. You know, not, not hard, but just enough to knock it down. Well, this thing, Billy Goat, and they were next to the edge of the fence, which is next to the woods, uh, about like this, uh, what you're looking at. And um, they, uh, the kids were playing, and that Billy Goat knocked the one little one down, the young one down, and uh, it, back, it walked away, and then when it came back, it came running at the kids and was going to headbutt one of the kids again. Well, when it got within about 10 feet of it, evidently that Bigfoot was standing there watching the kids. And when that billy goat came running at the kids, it rushed down and grabbed a hold of the billy goat by the horns and stopped it dead in its tracks. Billy goat squalling, kids are squalling, the wife screams. I come running off the hill, and the husband come out of the house, and uh, all you could see was this big arm and this head sticking out from the side of the tree, uh, holding onto this billy goat and keeping it from harming the kids. And when the husband come out, he come out with a rifle. As soon as it saw that, it flipped the billy goat over onto its back, didn't kill it, just, you know, flipped it over. And when he flipped it over, it it laid there on its back and just kicking around trying to get back up. And it got back up and ran off. And when the husband came out with the rifle, the, the Bigfoot took off running through the woods, and I saw it run off. And that thing was huge. And I do mean huge. I'd say it probably would have weighed probably 1,300, 1,400 pounds because um, it was broad across the chest. I'm just guesstimating that the, the width of the chest. Somewhere between five and six foot across between the shoulders. Um, long, flowing black hair, and I never got to see its face, but I did see it from the behind. And uh, this Bigfoot just hightailed it off. Uh, they gathered up, the wife gathered up the two kids, ran them into the house, and the husband and I both went looking for it. Uh, uh, Sunday morning and couldn't find it. Uh, after it took off, it just outdistanced us, no problem at all. Anyway, I, he went back to the house, and I stayed out there, and, and the last place I found that was scuffed up from something running, uh, I stood there and hollered and told that thing to leave him alone. It, it, you know, I understand that you're just wanting to protect the kids, but you're scaring the kids, too. And uh, went back to the house and explained to them what to do and, and everything and, and just take ownership of their property again. And if they saw it again, to tell it to leave. That they're scaring the kids, that it's scaring the kids. Now this thing had a little bit of gray hair on it and um, a dark colored brown like dark brown hair and had some gray in the hair so i figure this was an old male bigfoot that had got kicked out of a clan probably had a mate with it 
and they just like watching the kids, didn't want to harm the kids, didn't want to harm nobody, just like watching the kids because, you know, they were out of their clan now, and uh, because they got gotten sold. Uh, but for about 10 months, they'd get rocks. Every once in a while, there'd be a few rocks thrown on top of the roof, or the kids would see the thing, you know, at night, it would walk past their window, and, uh, that happened a couple of times in about a 10 month period. And after, and in about eight months or nine months into it, uh, the uh, husband was sitting out on his porch and this thing came walking across the field where the billy goats were at. Well, he hauled at it and told it to leave. He didn't want it around. He didn't try to shoot at it or nothing. But he told it to leave. He didn't want it around because it was scaring his wife and scaring his kids. And uh, he didn't want them scared or harmed or anything of that nature. So for a couple months, you know, once every couple of weeks or so, they'd get a rock thrown on the roof or they'd see it. It'd be out there watching the kids from a distance, 100, 200 yards away. And... After about 10 months, it just stopped coming around. I, I guess it took the hint that it didn't want, you know, they didn't want it there. And it left. Uh, at least I hope that's what happened to it. I hope it didn't go somewhere and, and die alone or anything of that nature. I just hope it left with its female and went somewhere else. Uh, but that's a possibility. It may have not had a female with it and just went somewhere and laid down and, and passed away. But that was a 10 month ordeal. It wasn't a big deal. Um, didn't harm nobody. Didn't, it just scared the daylights out of everybody. And, uh, that's the story I have for you. I hope you enjoy it. And, um, if you have comments or questions, you're more than welcome to leave them in the uh, comment section. And uh, as always, if, if any of you have a problem with a Bigfoot, dog man, whatever, please contact me and tell me what's going on. And then we'll see if we can't get you some help, either through me coming out or me contacting somebody else to see if they can help you in some way, shape, or form. And uh, I hope y'all enjoy this video, and uh, thank you for the many prayers and the well wishes for my baby girl. Uh, no matter how old they are, they're still my babies. Um, same goes for my boys. They're still babies to me and their mama. But keep praying for her, and uh, I thank you beforehand. And uh, if anything changes, we'll let you guys know. But uh, she's going to be fine. Uh, the Lord won't let anything else happen to her. He's going to watch over and he's going to heal her. I know that in my heart. But y'all have a blessed day. And that's the end of this one. See you next time. Bye-bye.